Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy and we're back for part two of our look at Sleeping Warrior's egg experiment. Now, as you recall, Sleeping Warrior was able to successfully float an egg despite some Nobel laureate level laboratory technique. But problems arose when he attempted to attribute the movement of the egg solely to the amount of salt that he put in the water. And we noticed that bubbles don't rise in water on the International Space Station in zero G. We also noticed that on Earth, if you blow bubbles into a bottle and drop it, taking out the acceleration of gravity, the bubbles don't rise. Well, now the question becomes is, is density the only thing that we're looking at here? So let's go to Mr. Miles Davis, who has an excellent channel that you should check out for the answer. Here we have a piece of wood floating in a dish of water. Notice that the wood, which has a lower density than the water, floats on top, but only about half of the wood is submerged. Now we'll go ahead and add some more wood. We haven't changed the density of the water, and we haven't changed the density of the wood. Yet now that bottom piece of wood is completely submerged. Why is that? Well, you may say it's the weight, and I would agree with you. Weight is mass times an acceleration, and in this case, the 9.81 meter per second squared downward acceleration of gravity. That is the difference between relative density and buoyancy. Buoyancy requires an acceleration. Relative density has no acceleration. So let's see if the acceleration of gravity played any role in this. And to confirm it, we'll do a happy little experiment. Now, as part of scientific peer review, I attempted to reproduce Sleeping Warrior's results using his equipment. I did, of course, use proper laboratory technique, uh, for example, these precision scales here to measure the mass of the egg. Many people in the comments pointed out that I did indeed calibrate the scale, but I didn't show tarring it. Tarring it is when you put a container on the scale that you're going to measure your material in, and then you zero it to the mass of that container. So this 58.66 grams is the actual weight of the egg alone, not the container. Now what we ended up doing here was comparing the density and the mass of an egg to the mass of the water surrounding the egg of an equal volume. By changing the density and the mass of that volume of water, we were able to make the egg float or sink. Now in the previous video, I demonstrated that I can put an accelerometer on my phone and measure the uh, acceleration that phone is undergoing in three axes. This is an example of that. Now if I put two objects of different densities on the surface of this phone, I know that the acceleration due to gravity is only going straight through the phone, through the desk to the floor. It's not going side to side or up and down along the surface of the phone. So if we're dealing strictly with motion caused by density, as I put two objects of different density next to each other, they should move. If an acceleration on the other hand is required and they are undergoing no acceleration, they won't move at all. So let's see what happens. As there is no movement between the rock and the styrofoam, I conclude that there is no force acting on them. If you assert that gravity in any way caused something in this experiment, that means you are adding a secondary cause, adding by inference. If you add a secondary cause by inference, you fall outside of scientific method because you can't infer an extra cause when you've already got one that you've manipulated. Well, I'm very grateful that Sleeping Warrior made it so abundantly clear that gravity, which is a 9.8 meter per second square acceleration from down towards my feet, as measured by my iPad, has no effect on relative density. So here we have an example of relative density. We have a helium balloon and a fishing sinker. The helium balloon is floating up. The fishing sinker is sinking down and it's in a, a medium of air. So basically what we have is this. We have our sinker, we, the water represents our air, and the styrofoam is floating on top just like the helium balloon is. So I can turn this to the side right now and it won't have any effect because this is an equilibrium. 
based on relative density, just as that system is in equilibrium based on relative density. But let's add a little thing to it. How's about we turn the photo on the side? Now everything in this photograph is exactly the same as the first one, including the 9.8 meter per second square acceleration of gravity going in that direction. There is no acceleration going up or going down. The balloon and the sinker are in equilibrium in their medium, the air. Their relative densities have not changed and their position has not changed. But what do you say I step on the gas and accelerate to 30 miles an hour? I'll be pushed back into my seat because I'll feel a force and that force will go from top to bottom. Will that have any effect on the balloon and the sinker? According to relative density, no. According to buoyancy, oh, most definitely. Now, under buoyancy, what will happen is the helium balloon, which is less dense than the equal volume of air it sits in, will be displaced upward. Likewise, the sinker will be more strongly affected by the acceleration than an equal volume of air because there's more mass in it and it will move back. So basically, the sinker will move down and the balloon will move forward. Okay? There's no explanation for that with relative density, but there's a perfect explanation for it with buoyancy. Let's look at another example. Well, now the acceleration of gravity of 9.8 meters per second square is going from the right to the left. Once again, the balloon and the sinker are in equilibrium and there's no force acting on it up or down. But now I'm up to 30 miles an hour in my truck and I decide I want to slow down to zero, so I hit the brake. So, the direction of the acceleration will be from the center of the photo downward. The balloon will not be affected by relative density because it's in equilibrium. Same with the sinker. However, under buoyancy, the balloon will move up and the sinker will move down. The sinker will move in the direction of the acceleration and the balloon will move in the opposite direction. Now, keep that visualization in your head because we're going to go back to the normal view and then we're going to put it in motion. To consider relative density as a reason for the movement of objects has been invalidated. It has been superseded by buoyancy. Buoyancy has been tested. Buoyancy has been confirmed as the current science. So folks, we have a conclusion. In order for objects of different densities to move past each other, an acceleration has to act upon them. It's not just simply adding salt that's not an acceleration. You need an actual acceleration. And we don't need to invent one. We have one. It's called gravity. So, signing out from Northern Michigan, this is Bob the Science Guy. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the presentation and make sure you hit that like and subscribe button down there in the lower right corner. And while you're at it, stop by Miles Davis's channel as well. There's a link in the description. He does great work out there.